it's been an extremely exciting day in the Nyx household where cloth pads are concerned. Um, so there'll probably be another video made very, very shortly. Um, I'm going to end up having to compare two stain treaters had a cloth pad mishap in the Nyx house. However, that got us to talking on the group because I was getting advice from people about stain treating and how to deal with pads that have sat too long. And so we kind of started talking about disinfection and sanitization and it put me in mind um, of a really common myth that flies around about cloth pads and that is that they can cause or prolong or increase the frequency of yeast infections. So we're going to talk about yeast infections because I've got time this afternoon and we really need to squish this one. Okay, so yeast infections. First let's talk about what a yeast infection is. The culprit is a fungus called Candida albicans. There are about 20 different kinds of Candida. It's a yeast um, and it manifests as a fungus when it infects the human body. Um, so that's what you're dealing with. It is not a bacteria, it's a fungus which doesn't make it much better, does it? And it is a very persistent little booger as far as pathogen, I think that's the correct way to put it, as far as pathogens go, Candida is a pretty persistent and nasty one and it can cause all kinds of discomfort. When people get a Candida infection in their mouths, it's called thrush. And when you get it on your genitals, you just call it a yeast infection, okay? Now, where cloth pads come into all of this is that a lot of people are under the mad impression that if you are wearing a cloth pad when you have a yeast infection, that the cloth pad is going to get infected, which it does, can, possible, um, and that that means that the pad is destroyed and you can't use it because if you ever wear that pad again, it's just going to keep giving you a yeast infection. That's not true. So I'm going to go over kind of how candida infections work, how long they can stick around, and how you kill it because it's actually really, really easy to get rid of. That's the good news, I guess. The candida yeast is naturally present in the vaginal canal. Um, so there's always gonna be some down there. When it becomes a problem is when it becomes overabundant. Um, that usually happens when the good bacteria um, are off balance with the number of yeast, I don't know, particles, cells, I don't really know. Not a doctor. This is just the stuff that I've read about it because I really wanted to understand what the ramifications were. So there's always candida in your body. Um, and the only time it becomes a problem, the only time you actually get an infection is when your flora, you know, the bacteria to yeast kind of balance in your body is off. Okay. So when that happens, it's not because you did anything dirty. It's not because you did anything wrong. It's because sometimes, it can just happen. There are people who are more prone to it uh, than others, and this is usually personal pH balance. It could be diet or behavior related, um, and not behavior, that's a bad way to put it, lifestyle or diet related. It can have a lot to do with just your natural susceptibility to fungal infections. Um, so if you're a person who suffers from them chronically, you're still going to be able to, to use your cloth pads because I'm going to get to that. But if you tend to be a, a chronic sufferer from yeast infections, you might want to speak to somebody about different things that you can try because usually that's a systemic problem that has to do with your personal flora balance and it can usually be counteracted by diet, which is what I read on a couple of medical sites when I was thinking about doing this video this morning. And I'd heard that before. Um, I'm very fortunate. I've only ever had two in my life, and both of them were a direct result of antibiotic use because it killed off too much good bacteria in my body while I was taking the medication. So that's how you get a yeast infection. It's not, you know, it's not a contagious thing like the flu. Uh, but if you get um, yeast infection material, the uh, a bunch of the candida in a cloth pad because you're currently dealing with an external or internal uh, genital yeast infection, there's really good news for you about getting rid of it. Fabrics do harbor candida exceptionally well, and that's why it is important that you be aware of how to get rid of it, but it is very, very simple. Um, candida cannot survive in temperatures above 102, I'm sorry, 122 degrees Fahrenheit or 50 degrees Celsius. So, I'm um, sorry, in water of those temperatures. So basically all you have to do is wash your cloth 
with hot water. Um, you just double check your washing machine and make sure that on the hot setting the water is more than 122 degrees Fahrenheit or 50 degrees Celsius. So if you have temperature settings that match that, um, you're going to kill all of it just by washing it in water of that temperature. So, I mean, that's the easiest thing in the world right there. Keep in mind that um, water boils at over 200 degrees Fahrenheit, so we're not talking about scalding hot water here. It just needs to be a bit warmer than the human body normally is in order to kill off the candida fungus. Now, if you want to take an extra measure, and I know I'm the kind of person who certainly does because I tend to get iffy about these things, but we have a great, cheap, common, and pretty natural product on the market that's easily available to everybody, and that's called hydrogen peroxide. The regular stuff that you get in the brown bottle, the 3% peroxide, uh, hydrogen peroxide, excuse me, which is H2O2, um, if you get a bottle of that, you're going to be able to kill any of the yeast that's in any of your clothing, your sheets, your pajamas, underwear, and of course your cloth pads. So let's talk about how I recommend dealing with it if you know you've had a yeast infection or if you just tend to have chronic yeast infections and you want to be preventative um, about your clothing and your cloth pads. If you're a person who has had a yeast infection or you get them frequently, I highly recommend that you do this on a regular basis, not just when you are actively suffering from an infection. And remember that your underwear is just as important as the liners or the cloth pads that you've used during those periods of time, okay? Um, so the first thing you wanna do is get yourself a bottle of 3% hydrogen peroxide. Now, this is also, as it happens, an extraordinarily effective blood stain remover for many, many people. Now, me personally, I need something a little beyond that, and you can see how I stain treat my pads in my How to Wash Your Pads Without Getting Stains video. However, if you want to disinfect them or sanitize them, especially for yeast, but for lots of other things, hydrogen peroxide is actually a really good disinfectant, and it kills all kinds of bacteria and fungus and spores and stuff like that. The list is really good. Go to a reliable medical website if you want to look at all of the things that you can count on 3% hydrogen peroxide to kill for you. Yeast is among them. So what you want to do is take that 3% hydrogen peroxide and pour it or spray it directly on the affected clothing items and your cloth pads. Make sure you just get it spread through there and if you really want to soak them because you've been actively dealing with one and there's a lot of moisture in the pad, just go ahead and pour it straight onto the pad um, and then put them in a wash cycle on hot. And that's it. That's all you have to do. Again, what I try to remind people over and over again with cloth pad use, because there is this societal impression that menstruation is practically a toxic waste material. And it's really not that big a deal. It's just body fluid. You don't need to burn it. You, do, you, know, you don't need to cleanse it with fire. <laughs> you just need to launder your items properly. And they are going to be better for you. They are going to be less likely to cause urinary tract infections or yeast infections or any of that other stuff than your disposables are, okay? They breathe better. They're porous and absorbent so they don't hold stuff with plastic against your skin on your mucous membranes. They're just, not to mention the comfort and the environmental benefits. I mean, don't use yeast infections or this concept that menstruation is so filthy you can't possibly be sanitary using them as your excuse not to switch. If you don't want to use cloth pads, hey, that's fine, but we don't need to say things that aren't true. Okay, and I really, you know, if your big hesitation about switching to cloth is that you were worried about yeast infections, yeah, no. Okay, I hope this was helpful. I will talk to you guys again really, really soon because we're doing some stuff down in the bathroom with my cloth pad mishap. So it's going to be a UK versus US kind of cleaner face off kind of video. <laughs> and I hope to have that for you really soon. All right, talk to y'all later. Bye.